So praise God. God bless you this morning, saints. Um, we're uh, just going to kick off with, with some prayers. I do hope you and your family are doing well. Amen. Just remember Jesus is with you. You were born for a time like this. His anointing is in you. You can overcome all things. Amen. And through we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So let's just pray straight away, saints. And we'll get into the word of God. And uh, we just allow the Holy Spirit to be the teacher this morning and, and the blesser and, and to open our hearts, give us eyes to see and ears to hear what God has to say to us this morning. Amen. So, Father, I do pray that you'll open our eyes as we jump into the Word of God this morning. And I pray the Spirit of God will be our teacher. We thank you that in the Word of God there's wonderful things, Father, which you want revealed to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray your blessing upon all that hears the Word Open our hearts, Father, open our ears, that we will hear, our eyes, that we will see, Father. And, and I pray, Lord God, that you will cause that hope of the kingdom to rise up in the inside of us, that we will reach out and receive, Father, all that you have for us in Jesus' name. I pray your word will instruct us and bless us and challenge us, Father, and bring us to that place where you want us to be, Father, in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Amen. Um, maybe if you can get Philippians 4 again, saints, um, as I said last week, um, I taught a lesson on, on a lesson on Philippians 4 and I didn't plan to kind of to go back there again, but I kind of do feel, you know, the leading of the Holy Spirit to go back in there. It's kind of looking a little bit like a part two, but maybe not so much. But I want to go in there and dig out some, you know, fundamental kind of necessary truths that we really need to have in the kingdom of God. Uh, you know, if we look in the Old Testament, if we look at Joshua before he went into the promised land, uh, the angel of the Lord came to him and said, be strong and be of good courage. And the angel kept reiterating this over and over again as he instructed Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein both day and night. And, um, you know, he was giving him instruction of, of how to walk before God. But he kept saying over and over again, fear not, Joshua, be strong and be of good courage. You know, and that's a pattern for us today as well, saints. You know, the, the kingdom of God and the work of the ministry, the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you want to be a servant of the Lord, you can't be faint hearted. You can't be put off by things that will, you know, cause fear or anxiety or maybe feel a threat. A level of tread about it you know but we've got to be willing to be people that will put our lives on the line for jesus and just press into whatever god has for us in the name of the lord jesus christ you know but listen it's all easy saying that you know it's like prepping the soldiers for battle but you know we got to trust in one thing that when we get into the battle and we're when we're facing the enemy full on and when all is firing around us and things are going crazy, we've got to know that the Lord is with you. The Lord is at hand and he will keep you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you've got to realize that the power of God is on the inside of you. So we need to hold fast for his word, to his word and know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do all things through Christ. I'm saying that to you this morning, saints. I'm kind of stopping the message really just to say that to you, that you can do all all things through Christ who strengthens you. So do you, if you want to be a servant of the Lord, you want to do the things that God is calling us to do. You know, as I said before, the world is getting trickier out there. The world is getting darker. Darkness is getting darker. You know, people are more bent on doing evil and, and you know, fulfilling the, the will of the enemy. Perversions are, are rising and becoming the norm with people across the, uh, the globe. You know, people even... Um, well, you know, it's not that they run away from the thought of righteousness, but they actually openly resist it and calls right. They call righteousness fanaticalism, you know, so you are the you are the light in this. Amen. So I suppose what I'm saying this morning is we've got to be strong. Praise God. We've got to do that. We've got to realize that God is with us and on the inside. So I want to go into Philippians four saints. As I said, again, it's a, it could be a little bit of a part two, or, but um, let's dig in there. Let's drill down and let's see the necessary uh, elements that we need to, you know, soak our minds into this morning in Jesus name. Amen. So the Bible says here, rejoice in the Lord in Philippians 4 and um, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Praise the Lord. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And then it says in verse 6, it says, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgivings, let your requests 
be made known unto God. And um, verse 7 says, Then in the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And that's the verse I want to get to this morning because I really believe that there's a, a necessary, you know, it's a necessary part of our walk with God is that we know and we understand and we are experiencing the peace of God which passes all understanding in every circumstance and in every situation. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, you could be rattled by, you know, a bad report or, you know, you could have an emotion or something rise up and concerning something that could be going wrong, um, you know, in your daily walk. But we got to realize that through prayer and through supplication that that provision will come in. We've got to draw in the peace of God into our hearts in every, every time, in every situation. And what I want to do, you know, this morning is just to drill down a little bit into that thought and see how deeply rooted in the word, the peace, the the the, the, the um, fact, the truth, the truth of the peace of God. You know, how important that is to you, how important that is to, you know, your walk with God. And also how important that is to your service uh, to God toward other people. You know, it's, it's um, you know, I think we just need to get into the word and start breaking that down and, and having a look at that. Praise the Lord. So, you know, the Bible says, be careful for nothing but by everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and our uh, unto the unto God and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus you know so this is where we arrive this is where we arrive to we arrive to the peace of God um you know Romans 10 and verse 15 uh, calls the gospel the gospel of peace you know Romans 10 and 15 says how shall they preach except they be sent and as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And you see the whole message, the whole message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the gospel of peace. Praise the Lord. You know, when we bring that message of hope, that message of salvation, that message of life to people, you know, it is peace to that person. It's setting them free from, you know, whatever fear is binding them. It's setting them free from the threat of the enemy. You know, it even says in Hebrews uh, 2 and verse 15, I'll read this one, Hebrews 2 and 15. Well, I'll go back to 14 just to make it, bring it in context. It says, for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also, you know, speaking of Jesus, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that true death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. As speaking of Jesus and the cross and how he took, you know, on the devil. And by dying, he actually destroyed our death. Praise God. And that, so destroying him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And the purpose of that in verse 15, it says, And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So Jesus delivered people who through the fear of death were all uh, all their lifetime subject to bondage. So, you know, we are, the ministry of the gospel is actually a deliverance from fear. It is a deliverance from the threat of death because we know that the just to be, just to die is to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So, like, as I often say to the saints in the church, like it's a win-win situation. You know, if we live, we live for Christ. If we die, we go to be with them. Praise God. So <laughs> bring it on either. You know, it makes no odds. Praise God. So if you are that, if you have that state of mind about you, you know, you're not going to be put off by, you know, little things. Praise God. Amen. So let's just analyze the, the three thoughts that um, we're looking at there. So Romans 14, 17 uh, we know the Bible says that for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So again, the focus there is on peace. The, it's a gospel of peace. It said the kingdom of God is not, you know, to do with should we eat that or should we do that? You know, and a, a lot of Christians could do well to, you know, meditate on that scripture because it's all about do's and don'ts for some people. And it's not really about that in the kingdom of God. It's about knowing God. It's about loving him and about serving him, knowing righteousness. Amen. So the kingdom of God, it says here, because people were in this particular context, in uh, they were 
I suppose, having disputings over should we eat meat, should we not eat meat, can we drink this, can we not drink that, because there was different cultures in the day. You know, I can't have, I don't have time to go into it too deeply, but you know where the questions were coming from. People were wondering about physical things. Is this, do we do this, do we do that? You know, you can translate all that into today's culture and in Christian culture. Where Christians are asking all these questions, you know, should we wear this type of clothing or should we wear this makeup or whatever it is that's going on? And, you know, Christianity is not about the outer man. It's not about the appearance. It's not about these things. It's not about it. Like it's that's up to you to manage that. And, you know, we've got to maintain good testimony before people. But it's, it's about the inner man. It's about righteousness. And then the Bible says peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And then it says this in verse 18, which really puts a, a cap on this. It says, For he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. Praise God. For he that in these things, what things? Righteousness, peace, and joy. So he that in righteousness, he that in peace, you know, he that in peace serveth Christ is acceptable to God and proved by man. So really, saints, what this scripture is saying here, you know, that what should differentiate the believer um, as he goes and speaks the gospel of peace to the unbeliever is that he himself is a person of peace and a person of righteousness and a person of joy. And I think that is the testimony that speaks to people that when you have that peace about you, you know, regarding life, about circumstances and hey, you know, this week is another mighty opportunity in Ireland for um, the saints of God really to kind of show moderation and, you know, show that there's a peace. I had so many Christians come to me and say, brother, I have a peace about this. I have a peace about this. So look, regardless of what the government is doing, trying to you know bring the the numbers of the pandemic down and so on like this and will there be provision for households and food of course there'll be provision jesus will provide for you amen as i said if the birds have to deliver bread to this house you know so be it but you know i'm not going to lose my peace over that amen so these are the things that differentiate from god you know i'll, I'll just skip over a couple of scriptures here in judges 6 and 24 and you can look up that itself this again is about gideon and Gideon had an encounter with God as God was commissioning Gideon to, you know, go in against the um, Midianites, I think it was. I, I, you can check it out. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But um, Midian, uh, Gideon was being raised up at that point. The angel of the Lord met him. And Gideon kind of panicked because he says, oh, no, he says, I've seen the face of the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to die, you know. And God immediately revealed to him in Judges 4 and 26. He says, the Lord said unto him, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. You see, you know, a meeting, a direct meeting with God should should bring that one, you know, blessing to you of peace. You know, you, when you get around God, you feel his peace. Amen. That sounds that sounds so simple. Well, that is so profound. When you get around God, when you get around his teaching, when you get around his blessing, when you get around fellowshipping with God, you should feel peace. You should feel, you know, the it's like the disciples on the Emmaus Road when they walked with Jesus. They said, Did not, did not our hearts burn within us? And yet Christians, you know, they get so knocked out about that. You know, Jesus said in, um, just bear with me, my notes are not in order this morning, but um, Jesus said in John 14, 27, he said, Peace I leave you, leave you, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world give it, give it I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Jesus was directly instructing his disciples, saying, My peace I give you, my peace I give you. And again, that is the calling card of the believer to be at peace with the message, be at peace in your walk with the Lord. Praise God. And that's the differentiation fact. We know that Jesus himself, in the old scripture in Isaiah 9, 6, was called the Prince of Peace. Amen. And that scripture that probably be on your Christmas card in a few weeks time. But still, it, it has that awesome truth in there. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Praise God. So Jesus died so that he could bring you into real into a, a relationship with the father a relationship that was non-condemning your sins is is 
forgiven at Calvary. Your sins are paid for at Calvary in order that you can come in to the presence of God and there's no issue of condemnation between you and the Father anymore because when God looks at you, he sees the righteousness of Jesus, not you shined up. Amen. We really have to get this out of our minds, this, you know, gospel that fixes us up. You know, yes, the gospel sanctifies us and, you know, but what it's doing is it's, it's, it's causing a manifestation of the righteousness of God, the righteousness of Jesus in our life, not our righteousness. Praise the Lord, our righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. So what we're called to do is manifest the righteousness of Jesus. And in turn, when God looks at us, he looks at the blood of Jesus. He looks at the earth cleansed and he looks at just pure fellowship with you in Jesus name. So that's peace, peace, peace. Praise the Lord. When the angels announced the birth of Jesus, they said peace on earth. Amen. And that was not to do with between man and man, because we've seen that that didn't happen. And even Jesus corrected that in the Gospels. He said, I have not come to bring peace, peace. Uh, he says, but a division on earth, praise God. So, you know, that may sound conflicting, but it's not really. The peace element is between man and God, not between man and man. So if there's a division between two men, one wanting the gospel and one wanting the devil, you know, there will be that division, that conflict, be conflict between those two men. But if you want to serve God, then there's peace between you and God because of Jesus Christ. Amen. So these are the wonderful things. Isaiah 20. Uh, 26 and 3 wonderful scripture it says thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee so again we're back to Philippians 4 where it talks about think on these things whatever things are true whatever things are honest whatever things are just whatever things are friendly whatever things are of good report if there's any virtue any praise think on these things so our mind has to be stayed on God, stayed on the gospel. You know, we can't take holidays from God. Can't take time out, go off and do something different and then come back. You know, we need to stay in the presence of the Lord. Praise God day by day. Get the scripture saints and meditate on them over and over again. Hallelujah. You know, I can't say that, um, you know, enough. Uh, it is a blessing. It is a blessing when you have a peaceful mind. Isaiah 26 and 3, thou will keep him in perfect peace. This is the Old Testament. And you know, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And, you know, funny enough, if you read that scripture, it says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed in thee. And that's how they translated it into English. But if you actually go back to the Hebrew, it actually says uh, to translate it, it back into the Hebrew, it says you will keep him in peace, peace. It says actually the word perfect there is the same word for peace, which is the word shalom. And so that scripture says, you will keep him in shalom, shalom, whose mind is stayed on thee. And, you know, and that's just a kind of a more solid way of saying that, you know, that peace cannot be broken. It's two pieces, you know, peace multiplied by peace, peace squared, you know. So God will keep us in peace, peace and shalom, shalom, but, but whose mind is stayed on the Lord, whose mind dwells on God, whose mind dwells on his word. Praise the Lord. God will keep that peace. I hope you're feeling his peace this morning or this afternoon or this evening. Whenever you're listening to the message, I hope you've, you're listening to the voice of God in you by the Holy Spirit. And that peace is speaking out to you. Praise God. You know, uh, that's one of the, the great elements. You know, there's so many other things I could talk about. We could talk about the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. It talks about the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Uh, you know, I'm not going to preach on that. Go away, look at that yourself. But there's two two or three. Um, one, one thing in particular I want to say to you about that. You know, if you look at, you know, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, love, those things, uh, those are things that seemingly bless other people. But we think that, you know, joy and peace is what blesses us. But that's not totally true either because joy and peace blesses other people. If you have joy, if you have peace, you are blessing other people as well. And we need to be those people of peace. Amen. Now, um, what I wanted to say to you is this, okay? So differentiating, it, it actually there's a scripture in the book of James, which is awesome. Um, the book of James Praise the Lord. And it talks about how we as believers can differentiate 
you know, the different voices that are in the world. Okay, so if you break it down, you've got, you know, the voice of your flesh, the voice of the world, the voice of the devil, and then we've the voice of God. And sometimes Christians can get a little bit confused. Was that God speaking to me? Or was that the devil speaking to me with some deceitful sort of spin on it? Or is this just my own voice, you know? And Christians can, you know, have an element of confusion about that until you start to understand this element of peace about the voice that speaks to you. And, I, you know, it's nearly like a metric um, that I definitely use in my own life that, you know, God brought me into um, um, different truths uh, as a believer over the years. And sometimes when God brings you to a certain truth to help you to understand it, you know, there could be a bit of breaking down of old stuff, if you know what I mean, like changing your mind. God has to show you something brand new and, and change your thinking on something. And, you know, sometimes if you're comfortable with the old thinking, it can be a challenge to move on to the truth, to the actual what God is telling you to do. You know, there could be a conflict there. And sometimes Christians can, can um, you know, take the easy way out and say, oh, this is not God. This is the devil or this is me or, you know, I'm just going to park that because I don't fully understand it or so on. But there's a way of knowing. There's a way of knowing. This is what I'm trying to say. There's a way of knowing if it's God or not God. OK, praise God. Let's read. Let's read this. This is in James 3, verse 13. OK, so please listen to these scriptures and there's metrics that we can use to check. Is this God speaking to you or not? So who is a wise man in Jude with knowledge among you? Who is that wise man in Jude with knowledge among you? Let him show it out of his good lifestyle, his works with meekness and wisdom. If there be any if there be bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. OK, so there's, you know, check number one. Uh, if there's bitter envy or strife going on in your heart, <laughs> it's not God. I'm sorry. That is not God. That's that's to do with the enemy. That's to do with the flesh. OK, so if that's going on there, just straight away. That rules it out. So in verse 15 then says this wis wisdom descends not from above but is earthly sensual and devilish so if people are you know um, and i've seen this since it's so so deceptive i've even seen it on a level of ministers coming into the church where they're trying to drive an agenda for something that they believe to be true and they're driving the people hard now this has been a long time since i've seen this going on but i have seen it in my time they're driving the people hard with some agenda some truth you know and they generate fear in the congregation and they generate strife and there's like a strife in their heart going on and there seems to be confusion and the fruit of it is you know if we measure that you know by these scriptures we know that is not from god that's from the enemy praise the lord you'll always find when the enemy is driving an agenda it always generates this strife and generates bitter envy and so this the bible defines it in verse 15 it says this wisdom uh, descended not from above but is earthly and sensual and devilish in other words it's off this earth it's off the senses it's basically it's just to please the senses the loss of man and it's devilish it's actually off demons so praise god we need to be careful god has given us a metric here we should see now it says for where envy and strife is there is confusion in every evil work so praise god you know something just a, a quickie there you know, in my own home, I absolutely have outlawed strife in this house. You know, if there's striving going on straight away, I jump on it and say, no, we're not doing that. We're not striving because stri as the Bible says where there's envy and, and strife, there is confusion in every evil work. So it's like an open door that the devil can get in to destroy a family, to destroy a household is strife. So praise God. And you know how sometimes I solve strife saints is I'll take a hit. You know, I'll take the hit. I'll back down and I just give people the hug. I put them on, you know, on, on in the parking lot. <laughs> let them, you know, let people cool down. Let the emotions cool down. And I'll take the hit. I'll say I'm wrong. Praise the Lord. You know, in order to quell the strife, quell the, you know, because that brings in every evil work. But the Bible says in verse 17, and this is where we're going to, but it says, but the wisdom which is from above, the wisdom which is of God is first of all pure. That word pure means holy. First of all pure. And then it says, then peaceable. 
So if God is speaking to you, it's first of all pure, then peaceable. It brings peace. It's gentle, easily to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality. Praise God. God doesn't allow, you know, set up Christians, you know, partially, you know, with allowing one Christian to do one thing and the other Christian to do one thing. You know, God treats us the same. And without hypocrisy so you know we should look into this that if you have something you believe god is speaking to you about just remember if the if the wisdom is from above if this is god here's the metric it must be pure does it bring peace does the voice of god give you peace in your heart that's how we know it's god praise god that's how we know it's god saints i can't you know say that loud enough i really want you to hear this uh, this morning in jesus name the other scripture in colossians 3 15 what does the bible say out of the mouth of two witnesses two to three witnesses let everything be established i'm giving you a second witness here uh, so go to the book of colossians this is right after philippians in the new testament colossians 3 and verse 15 it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you were called in one body and be ye thankful. So let's go back to the beginning of that. It says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Praise God. So what that actually means, the word peace there, or sorry, let the peace of God uh, rule in your heart. The word rule there actually means literally in the Greek to govern or to be an arbitrator. In other words, the one that makes the decisions. So what is the government? Okay, the government of our country. Okay, there's these people that we elected and what they do is they sit together and they make decisions concerning the country, concerning the running of the country, concerning the the rules, the regulations, the benefits, the you know, the development of the country, the direction of the country. Okay, we get it. Okay, so the government does those things. The government governs. They make decisions based on, you know, their electorate, um, collective there. But the, the Bible says here to let the peace of God govern in your heart. So let the peace of God be that decision maker. You know, that, that decision maker or arbitrator on the inside of you, the peace of God. So what I'm really saying here is that if you come up against... Uh, you know, question, should I do this? Should I not do this? Is this right? Is that not, is that right? I don't know. And it could be for something really, really important. You might not have a lot of time to deal with whatever you're dealing with. And you kind of, so what I would suggest you do is you need to pray. You need to start praying. But, you know, when I pray, I often stop and I listen. I listen to my heart. I listen. Is there peace? Is there peace about this circumstance? Is there peace about this situation? And I just wait on the Lord and I'm not you know given to imagination imagining things but I know the peace of God and the Bible says here let the peace of God govern arbitrate you know, let the peace of God rule in your heart praise the Lord the ruler the governor in your heart so you know that's so so important saints as Christians just to even know that and you know as I said already in this lesson a little bit earlier there that you can rule out certain things that are coming from sometimes even you know experienced christians maybe christians that you look up to you think that they're you know that they're wise in the lord or whatever and sometimes they can be wrong they can say things that are wrong and i put my hand up and say i can be wrong about things so measure me against the word of god but measure me against this as well against the peace of god you know and, and i have you know seen things in the past that have been wrong and the way i have discerned that they were wrong was because I had no peace about what was being said. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, we need to do what the scripture says here. Do what the scripture says and says, let the peace of God be the decision maker in your heart. Let the peace of God govern in your heart and let the peace of God rule in your heart. You know, that's so, so important, praise God, in our lives today. I really thought it was worthwhile, you know, to go back in there and just to to Philippians four and look at that again because you know there's so many so many awesome um, so many awesome truths around that 
you know that you can decide yourself your relationship with god is based on the peace of god your decisions could be based on the peace of god your ministry of the gospel to others people perceive the things that you say many times is by the peace that comes from from you i'll just close with one last thing and here's one for you modern christians today something that you can think about this was um excuse me now while i look for it as i said my notes are not too orderly this morning um two scriptures okay two scriptures in closing why not do this why not do this okay so i'm talking about a peace that can be communicated a peace that can be felt a peace that defines you as being of god and being of the gospel of peace that scripture that we kicked off uh, in the book of romans you know blessed are, are the feet as i say of them that bring good news that preach the gospel of peace so you're a bringer of the gospel of peace okay so here's two scriptures i want you to maybe give some consideration to uh, matthew 5 and 9 it says blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god now in in context of what I've just talked about, think about that. If you're bringing peace to somebody that hasn't had peace, you're bringing them to the Lord. But what you're doing is you're a peacemaker. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes in the earth, you know, we think peacemakers are somebody who just breaks up fights. You know, it's not about that. You're bringing, you're a peacemaker when you bring peace to people. Okay. So it says, blessed, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers or blessed another way of saying it would be blessed are those who bring peace bring the god of peace to people blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god now isn't that awesome you know someone calls you the children of god because they know that you have been with god because you have the peace of god in your heart you have that connection with the lord peace peace amen and that's what our gospel is the gospel of peace hallelujah how much do you need this in these days? Amen. When things get tricky, praise God. You need to have the peace of God. Okay, last scripture. And that's in Luke 10 and 5. And Jesus said this, and I, I, I'm bringing this to you kind of like as a, as a thought and a challenge. Okay, so it says, into whatsoever house you enter. And I know during pandemic, we can't do that. But you can enter through a phone call. Okay. <laughs> All right. Or through Zoom or whatever. So, into whatsoever house you enter first say peace to this house so into whatever house you enter first say peace to this house yeah i i, I have to tell you I, I often do that when i go into a house i'll say peace to this house peace to this house you know or i often would say god bless all in this house as i enter into a house now okay you're just entering in. You don't know who's in the house. There could be bad. There could be good. There could be people that hate the gospel in the house. You don't know what the Bible says. When you go in first, say peace to this house. Then it says, if the son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon it. Okay, so if people receive this, it says their rest will be upon it. Sorry, your peace will rest upon the house. And if not, it shall just turn back to you again. So praise God. So why am I telling you that? Why did I even mention that? What I'm saying is this, you know, why not bless people with the blessing of saying, peace be unto you? The Jews do. The Jews do say, their greeting is shalom. Shalom to you. Peace to you. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God when you think of it. You know, we say hello. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> hello, or how are you? Or, you know, but you know, the, the Jewish people who know God, you know, uh, in the past, they were the ones that knew in the Old Testament, they say shalom, which is peace. That's the greeting, peace. But it's more than just, you know, I hope you've got peace. You're actually ministering your peace. Okay, that's the difference. You're saying peace be unto you. And just think of it. Last thing I'll say is this. Think of it. You know, you go through the different epistles that was written, you know, by the by Paul or by Peter, by, by I'm not sure if James said this or not. I don't think James said it, but you know, any of them of Paul, he would start off by saying to whatever saints from Paul, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ, or grace and peace. So it would be like a Christian ministry to say grace and peace be unto you. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord for today. I'm saying peace, peace be unto you. Peace be unto your family, peace in your life today, 
peace in your life go forward. May your heart find peace in Jesus. May the Lord God shine upon you. May your anxiety fade away like the morning mist. The things you care about, Christ is dealing with them. And may healing come to your mind and heart through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is my prayer for you today. Through Jesus, may healing come into your mind. And it is coming right now. As I'm speaking, the anointing of God is healing your mind. Healing, healing in Jesus' name. The peace of God. I can just feel that anointing just to pause on this for a few moments. I'm saying to you, Christian, as you've listened to this scripture, you've sel- you have felt the peace of God. You have felt his anointing. But I'm saying to you that God has taken you a step deeper and he's healing the anxiety of your mind and of your heart, even now in Jesus' name. So praise the Lord. Good news. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God be with you. And peace be to you in Jesus' name. Amen.